I, the most impossible thing that I ever did in my life was uh, was growing up in a family of eight kids and two parents in a small house with one not so great income. Um, but we made it out. We all survived, and we're doing pretty good as a family. It was impossible. Big family, not a lot of money. I'm sorry. Okay, the part, most impossible thing I have ever done is after my husband left me and my children, I moved out here from Los Angeles so that my kids could be with their dad, near their dad, and his family. So I'm living in Greenfield, Massachusetts, for the last places on earth that I would like to live for my kids. Jumped 110 foot through the air on a dirt bike in a motocross race. Uh, the most impossible thing I've ever done is getting sober. Um, it was really hard for me and now I'm going on two years this month and I worked really hard for it and I fought for it and I lost everything in the process. And that was the hardest and I felt at that time the most impossible thing, but it is doable. So I'm here today almost two years and every day is still a fight, still a struggle. Giving birth to a child. The most impossible thing I feel I've ever done was build my own business and keep it working. And then keep employees hired and paid well enough to be able to have their own home. I have ski jump up in Lake Placid off the big ski jumps up there. And they are um, I've jumped over 300 feet, so you can equivalent that, that to over a football field. Fall in love. Trying to make the United States stop killing people is the most impossible thing that I've ever tried in my life. The destruction of humanity, democracy, and the planet by the United States of America is so appalling that I've devoted the rest of my life to it. That's what I'm doing now. I'm 73 year old, years old, I have a teenage son, and I'll spend the rest of my life trying to make a place to live with me. Uh, the most impossible thing that I've ever done is doing a double backflip on skis. Okay, so the most difficult thing I've done in my life, I believe, is uh, getting my first job, uh, which is a real career, in uh, Manhattan. I had uh, been a high school dropout. I dropped out as soon as I got my driver's license in 10th grade, and I uh, immediately started building houses in uh, rural North Carolina. And I was a fairly successful, competent builder. I learned a lot, and I did hard work. Then my girlfriend at the time uh, and I moved to Manhattan. We moved to the Bronx. and. Uh, I realized I couldn't continue the same kind of work that I did in North Carolina. I couldn't build houses anymore with the uh, metal studs they were using, the unions, it was completely different construction. And I realized I was going to have to make a lot more money, so I decided I was going to have to do something like go into IT. Uh, I was had dollar signs all around me because I was in Manhattan, I was thinking Wall Street, those kinds of things. And uh, I took a couple of courses on electronics and I uh, faked my way into an interview in Manhattan. And the day in that interview, I think I'm gonna call that one of the most difficult experiences of my life, we're doing the impossible. Uh, I borrowed a suit from my uncle, uh, I put it on, and it was absolutely ill-fitting. The, the sleeves were way too long, uh, the pants were way too long, I had to roll them all up. Uh, and then came the matter of the tie, and my girlfriend told me that she knew how to tie a tie, but when it came time to do it, she just didn't. And uh, the clock was ticking away. Uh, the interview, you know, I had to get on a subway, take the number two down to Manhattan. And I thought, I'm not gonna get this job because I don't know how to tie a tie. Uh, somehow we, we did it. I went down to Manhattan. Uh, I had the uh, IT interview as about, you know, as a job for uh, fixing computer problems, software problems, hardware problems. And uh, they told me they didn't want me. They said I had no experience and uh, they didn't want me. And I did um, the biggest song and dance I've ever done in my life about how hard of a worker I am. I have no life, no friends, whatever. I'm just, I'm just dedicated to the job. And uh, somehow I got it. After that, I worked very hard in IT. I became a land administrator. I, uh, I, I was the first person to handle laptops when they came out. 
and I became interested in finance and uh, I went from one job to the next having had no education just coming from rural North Carolina until finally I was working in the financial side of things uh, in Wall Street some years later. Uh, and uh, each one of those interviews was, uh, was similar to the first but I, I built on that experience of the, uh, of the first one and bravery and uh, desperation counted for an awful lot. Thanks.